Hello everyone, my name is John Krajewski and I'm a member of the product management team here at Invences Wonderware. Um, today I'm going to walk you through a short video that's going to talk a bit about proper color usage in your HMI design, um, particularly utilizing color to attain the best situational awareness. When you're trying to attain situational awareness, you're really trying to make the operators act more proactively. So rather than waiting for things to happen, you want them to be looking for things prior to them happening so that they can stop them from happening. You want them to op optimize the operations. You want them to ensure that they're creating and uh, making the best utilization of resources, that they're operating at the highest efficiencies. Those are things that are important and also of utmost importance is safety. You want to make sure that things are being done in a safe manner. And so those are kind of the major focus goals of situational awareness. And we're going to talk a bit first about some color usage techniques which take away from situational awareness, things that can cause uh, problems for situational awareness. Then we'll talk about some of the better practices, and we'll talk about some of the things that um, particularly Invensys and Wonderware are doing to make this a little bit better or easier to achieve. So I'm going to start with the screen that's on the, uh, the graphic that's on the screen right now, which is a demo that I built myself many years ago. Um, and I'm going to point out many of its flaws, uh, because at the time, I guess, I just didn't know any better. So one of the flaws that are happening on this particular screen are in inconsistent color coding. So you're seeing in this particular demo that closed is being indicated by red, stopped is being indicated by red, I've got a backwash required indicator by red. I've got a high effluent turbidity alarm, which is showing here by red. Now, some of these things require action, and some of them don't. So with this inconsistent usage of color coding, what can happen is that the operator can be conditioned that red does not require action, when in fact, sometimes it does. And so if you use this inconsistent color coding, you can then condition your operators to take the opposite of what you want them to do in terms of they're now ignoring the backwash required indicator um, because red just became a normal condition in their system and it wasn't automatically triggering a response when they were seeing the color red. Other things that can often happen can be things that are, say, uh, distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the air blower, uh, open the air inlet valve on here, and I'm going to show how in this particular demo there was a lot of these bubbles. Uh, these things are indicating bubbles, which are trying to indicate that there is air going through this system. Um, at this point now, is that a problem? Is this expecting the operator to act? What we find is that when people are looking at the screen, most of the time they're just looking at the bubbles because that movement is extremely distracting. Even though those bubbles don't require an action right now, that's where the operator's attention tends to center on. So when you do things like spinning pumps or movement or blinking when things are not expected to be acted on, you are distracting your operator and you are reducing their situational awareness. Another thing that's been done in this demo uh, very much consistently is um, what is referred to as a low data to ink ratio. There is a lot of ink on the screen, if you will, that's not actually conveying any information. So for example, if you're looking at the 3D pipes with the flanges and the and the nuts there, uh, the bolt heads that are showing on the flanges, or you're showing doing the 3D trim trim rings, the chrome trim rings, and some of the things like the glare of the sets that's on the, uh, the gauges. Many of these things are offering no value. They can actually be given in some cases, like the glare, to actually have detrimental value to the application. Um, they may actually make it visibly much more interesting to look at, um, but sometimes that visibly interesting is also distracting, and it can reduce the overall situational awareness and, again, reduce from those key goals we talked about earlier. So here were some examples of some bad use of color. Well, let's give some examples of a better use of color. So what I did is I took this same graphic and I recreated it utilizing some more, uh, more situational, focused, situational awareness focused techniques. So in this particular case, you'll see that um, the colors have been mostly focused on gray palette when there's not something to be acted on. And here, the yellow is clearly indicating where actions required. Um, this allows you to utilize color contrast to guide that operator's attention. You can clearly see there's something wrong with the effluent turbidity of this unit. I need to do something. Other things that you can do here are have consistent color usage. And that's what's, what's been done here. So we've applied this so that a case here would say uh, on is always this color of gray. 
off is intended to be white. Um, and so here, on is, is clearly indicated everywhere as this. So it should be anytime you see this, whether it's a button that says, you know, whether it's in service or out of service, the in service is the darker one, there's a consistent use of color. And we've implemented something we called element style, so we've abstracted those colors completely out of the system. So that when I want to know what active is, active is always this color, passive is always the white color. So that I've been able to abstract this and then I apply the styles throughout my entire application so that I am sure have consistency. So that when something is normal in normal states, I don't have high contrast of color. And some people will say, well, that's not exciting, or that graphic is boring. Um, when there is nothing to be done, the graphic really should be boring. It really isn't exposed to be exciting to the operator um, when there's nothing to be done there. Uh, there can be things that can be done to be more visually appealing, and that's where we start getting into some of the um, issues that have been in the marketplace with regards to inconsistencies and recommendations for color. Some color recommendations say go, go straight grays and use co different colors of grays and you only deviate from grays when you're trying to draw the operator's attention. There are other uses of color which is say well you can vary from that slightly and utilize al alternate colors. Um, and so I'll use an example here where I'm going to import a palette so I can change out my entire styles through importing a file. So I'm going to import here a file which is going to change out my entire palette. Now you'll notice that there's still a lot of gray here. It's different shades of gray now, but there's still much gray being utilized in the system. But now you'll see that the actual values are appearing more in blues. The set points are in greens. And at this point here, you know, I, I have leveraged some extra colors. Now I can go further if I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and or import yet another style. Um, that maybe leverages a little bit more color and see if that's valid. So I'm going to import style library. I'm going to pick one that's kind of blues with some gradients. Here what I've done here is I've now imported these colors and I'm still utilizing b uh, best practices towards situational awareness. I'm using consistent colors. I'm using um, uh, a standard that's being applied uh, all across the application. Um, but the, phys the presentation style is perhaps a little bit less uh, or a little bit more appealing and a little bit less boring than had been done previously. Again, these can be adjusted to suit taste, um, or you could use the basic industry standards, which we're going to be providing out of the box. Um, other things that we'll be providing for you out of the box are every piece of content you see on the screen here. One of the things that's driven those actions in the past is that we've always created libraries that were very visually impressive. And it was easy to just drag and drop them. Now we've created an entire libraries of content which are now more focused on better situational awareness. These things like these meters, meters that provide you context. Am I currently at set point? Am I away from set point? If I have an alarm in the system, they'll clearly indicate an alarm and show me as I start nearing the alarm before I get there. So here I can see my level is getting close to an alarm before it gets to the alarm. So I could potentially react to it before it gets to that state. Now this, this one's in alarm, and you can see how it jumps out and is in contrast to the rest of the application. Every piece of content that you're seeing me use in this demo has all been delivered with the core application. So everything that you're seeing here is built into the, um, into the product and available out of the box. So we believe here by providing these better, uh, this, these these palettes of libraries and element styles and this domain content and the wizards that we're providing here through situational awareness, we are going to be able to offer you more proactive operations, be able to allow you to more easily optimize your systems and operate your systems ultimately much more safely. Thank you for your time.